Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will dive into top 15 uh, chef tool interview questions that you need to know. Whether you are preparing for your DevOps interview or you just want to brush up on your chef knowledge, then you are in the right place. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question we have is, what is chef in DevOps? So Chef is essentially an automation tool which can be used to transform your infrastructure by making use of your code. So um, uh, working with your remote machines, uh, installing packages. So Chef is same as your Ansible tool. Chef is another uh, configuration management tool that we have which can be used to manage uh, configurations of your remote machines. So this tool can be used to automate the uh, overall process. The process can be uh, deploying to your remote machines, managing the remote machines, and also uh, maintaining the configurations of these remote machines. Now, the whole point of this is to ensure that your infrastructure is consistent and scalable. So, no matter how many machines you have, all the machines are consistent and also it is scalable. So, you can add and remove the machines as and when you uh, want. Now, uh, Chef, the, the script that we write in Chef, it uses Ruby based DSL. So, DSL it stands for a domain specific language and uh, this is what basically helps us to define the desired state that we want on the remote machine so what exactly we want to do a script that we write it's, it's a ruby based script that we uh, write the next question we have is explain the architecture of chef so when we talk about your chef architecture it mainly consists of three components. So we have the chef server. Now this chef server acts as our central server or our central repository. And this is where all the cookbooks, the uh, policies, the node configurations and everything are stored. So basically the script itself is maintained on the chef server. So these nodes, the remote machines, they communicate with the chef server to retrieve the uh, configurations and the cookbooks and all. The next component we have is a chef workstation. Now this is the development environment and we can use this environment to create our cookbooks, create the recipes and also test them before if, uh, uh, uploading the uh, scripts to the chef server. So it's like a, uh, um, a play area where we can create our scripts, test the scripts and then eventually upload them to the chef server. The last component we have is the chef client. Now this chef client is like an agent that is running on all the uh, remote machines and this agent it communicates with the chef server to basically get the cookbooks and uh, um, apply those configurations onto the remote machine. So we have three main components, we have the chef server, we have the chef workstation and then we have the chef client. The next question we have is what are cookbooks and uh, recipes in chef? So cookbooks is uh, simply the script. All right, so it's a collection of your uh, related configurations, your policies and also the resources, which basically defines the uh, state of your system. So basically what you want to do on the remote machines, right? The scripts and everything, the collections of this script, we call it as your uh, cookbooks. Now within these cookbooks, uh, it can contain your recipes, your attributes, your files, your templates and more. So basically the different, different uh, modules. Now the recipes on the other hand are the individual scripts or the uh, specific scripts within your cookbook. So your cookbook can contain multiple recipes uh, whereas your recipes is one particular script like one instruction. Now this recipes helps you to define the configuration or the software or the resources that need to be applied to your node. Like, uh, you want to install some package so that's your recipe you want to copy some file that will be one recipe you want to uh, work with some service that will be one recipe and then so on so your recipe is written in ruby dsl and it can include your resources so the resources can be uh, installing your packages managing your services or simply working with your file configurations so cookbooks is your collection of recipes and recipes are your individual tasks or your individual instructions that you want to execute on the remote machines. The next question we have is what is a resource in Chef? So resource is simply a Ruby block 
that describes the desired state of the configuration element so basically uh, uh, you know like what what exactly you want to manage so these resources can be used to manage your system components so the components can be your packages your files your users your services etc so you can think of them as your uh, modules so each resource has a type it has a name and a set of properties that helps you to define the state of the system so basically uh, you want to install a package so you'll have a resource for that you want to uh, copy some file over to the remote machines there will be a resource for that you want to create some users or you want to manage your services so we make use of your uh, resource block for that the next question we have is how do you handle dependencies in chef so uh, dependencies in chef can be managed through uh, metadata so for this we will be having a file uh, with the name metadata.rb so each cookbook has this file and this is where we define the uh, dependencies for other cookbooks and it's declared using the depends keyword so we make use of the depends keyword to basically create the dependencies and we maintain this in the metadata.rb file so when we are uploading a cookbook to the chef server the dependency graph is automatically resolved ensuring that all the all the required cookbooks are available so chef automatically takes care of that we just need to define the dependencies in the metadata.rd and when we are uploading the uh, uh, cookbook to the chef server chef automatically resolves the dependencies uh, all the dependencies that it needs so when we are executing the cookbook, it has all the dependencies that are needed. The next question we have is what is a chef role? So a chef role is simply a way to define certain configurations or behavior that can be applied to multiple nodes. So um, if you have a particular config that you want to uh, apply for multiple nodes, you can make use of your role for that. So roles are uh, used to group recipes and attributes under a common name and this makes it easier to manage the configuration of similar nodes so like for example grouping uh, your nodes and you want to do some common task or some common uh, uh, execution on this group of nodes we can make use of your roles for that so for example you might define a web server role that includes a recipe for installing and configuring a web server. So uh, let's say you have uh, 10 web servers and you want to install Apache on all these 10 web servers. So we can define a role web server and then we can target those 10 web servers only to execute our tasks. The next question we have is what is a chef environment? So chef environments are used to define different different stages of your uh, deployment. So it could be your development environment, your testing environment, your production environment. So when you want to uh, define these different different stages, we can make use of your chef environments. Now these environments, they simply allow you to uh, specify different configurations, different attributes, and also version constraints for your cookbooks based on the stage of the deployment. So uh, if you're deploying the cookbook to your development environment, you can have the uh, necessary configurations. If you're deploying it in the testing environment, you can have the necessary configurations. Likewise, if you're deploying it to the production, you can have the necessary configurations. So it is completely based on the stage of your deployment. Now this helps in managing multiple deployment stages effectively all right so that's where we can make use of your chef environments uh, the next question we have is explain the concept of item potency in chef so item potency is a, a common um, uh, term now in in chef it simply means we are applying the same resource repeatedly but no matter how many times we apply it it will yield the same result for example Let's say I'm trying to install a package. So no matter how many times I will run that task, um, uh, it will give me the same result. So it won't go and install it again and again and again. It basically checks if the desired state is there or not. If the desired state is already there, it will simply not make any changes. So for example, if a package is installed using chef 
and running the same recipe again won't reinstall the package all right so it will install the package only the first time the next time when i run the same recipe again it will not install that package again so chef will recognize that the desired state is already achieved so it basically understands that okay this this is already done the package is already installed and it will not do it again this ensures that the system state is consistent and also the system state is predictable so that's basically your idem potency so it is no matter how many times we're executing it gives us the same result the next question we have is how do you test chef cookbooks so testing your cookbooks can be done using several tools so chef provides us with a few tools that can be used so we have the chef spec which is a unit testing framework and we can use this to test individual recipes in isolation so individual tasks if you want to test you can make use of your chef spec for that then you have test kitchen which is a tool uh, that allows us to test our cookbooks in different environments so like um, uh, test it in the dev environment in the uat environment in the system environment so based on your requirement and for this we can make use of your virtual machines or containers and the last tool we have is a food critic which is a linting tool and this simply helps us to uh, check the cookbooks against best practices like uh, syntax checking to see if the code is um, uh, following the best practices or not so all those um, uh, validations can be done by making use of the food critic so these are some of the tools uh, that your chef provides for testing out your cookbooks the next question we have is what is the difference between a cookbook and a recipe in chef so a cookbook is the complete package it's your comprehensive package and this contains multiple resources uh, multiple recipes multiple attributes multiple files templates and more and all these are related to a particular set of tasks so basically uh, it contains everything uh, as part of your script what all you want to do on the remote machines everything will be packaged up as a cookbook now, the recipe on the other hand is individual task or a specific task that is defined within the uh, cookbook it's like a single step to configure uh, your machine or to install a software like for example let's say install a web web um, apache server that's one recipe likewise install tomcat that's another recipe uh, likewise install docker that's another recipe cookbook it's collection of these recipes together all right so multiple recipes can be part of a single cookbook the next question we have is what is a data bag in chef so data bag is a global variable that we can define in chef and this helps you to store json data which can then be accessed by your recipes during a chef run so you can uh, it's it's like a variable where we can store our data and then we can call this variable uh, within our cookbooks when we are uh, running the recipes so data bags are often used to store information that is shared across multiple nodes so it could be uh, your user account information api keys or configuration set settings so more like your sensitive data so data bags can be encrypted to secure sensitive information so if the data bag is containing any sensitive information we can encrypt it uh, to make sure that uh, you know we are securing that sensitive information but whenever we want to share like uh, we want we want to have some common data which needs to be shared across multiple nodes we can store them in your data bag the next question we have is how do you manage secrets in chef so secrets in chef can be managed using encrypted data bag so we can store the secrets in data bag and then we can encrypt it now encrypted data bags allow you to store sensitive information in an encrypted format and this ensures only the authorized users or only the authorized nodes can access that information uh, we can also integrate chef with uh, third party tools like we can make use of hashicorp vault or aws secrets manager to manage our secrets securely so either we can make use of data bag or uh, we can make use of your third party tools which allows us to uh, work with our secrets securely the next question we have is what is knife in chef so knife is simply a command line tool uh, that helps us or that acts as an interface with the chef server 
to manage your nodes, cookbooks, and recipes. So if you want to work from the command line, we can make use of this knife tool. So this provides us with commands that can be used to upload your uh, uh, cookbooks, bootstrap your nodes, uh, manage the roles, and interact with your chef server. So knife is a very essential tool whenever you want to perform any administrative tasks in a chef environment we can make use of your knife so it's a command line tool that allows us to interact with your chef server uh, work with the cookbooks manage the roles and many more things the next question we have is how do you scale chef infrastructure so when we talk about scaling your chef infrastructure we can make use of uh, multiple chef servers which are running in a high availability setup uh, we can also make use of server API endpoints to distribute the load and we can also leverage Chef Automate which is an enterprise scale operations. So uh, one option would be to run multiple instances of your Chef server and then have them behind a load balancer to distribute the load. We can also make use of the other option which is using the Chef Automate which is an enterprise level uh, tool. So additionally we can also make use of Chef Solo or Chef Zero that can help us to manage nodes without a central chef server in smaller environments. So if you have like environments with five, 10 machines, we can consider using Chef Solo or uh, Chef Zero, uh, which help us to manage these nodes without a central chef server. The next question we have is what is Chef Automate? So Chef Automate is an enterprise platform which provides us with full suite of automation tools for infrastructure, compliance, and application deployment. So if you're uh, looking for more features, if you're looking for more options with your Chef tool, then we can make use of your Chef Automate. So that's your enterprise level tool. So this integrates with Chef Infra, uh, Chef Inspect, and Chef Habitat, which provides us with a unified interface for managing and automating complex infrastructure at scale. So, it basically gives us more options, gives us more features. So Chef Automate also offers additional features like reporting, dashboards, and compliance management. So it's an enterprise tool uh, uh, where you're looking to get more out of your Chef tool, then we can opt um, uh, for your Chef Automate. And there you have it. That brings us to the end of our top 15 uh, Chef um, tool interview questions that you need to know. Uh, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more DevOps content. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.